In a separate maths cast, I've discussed the scalar triple product of three vectors. Here I'm going to investigate the vector triple product. As its name should suggest, this is a product made from three vectors which is itself a vector. As it happens, we will need to use the cross product multiple times. Twice, in fact. I'm going to call my three vectors A, B and C and investigate the triple product shown at the bottom of this page A cross B cross C. The bracketing here means that we do B cross C first and then take the cross product of that vector with A on the left hand side. You should remember of course that the order is important for cross products. It turns out that once we know this product for example then we can easily enough write down other versions where, for example, the bracketing might be different. A cross B cross C. Or perhaps with the vectors in the opposite orders. B cross C cross A. Or permuted with each other, and so on. All of those products will follow from one basic one, the one we're about to do now. So, let's get started. We can see here that we're going to need to do B cross C. I hope you remember how to do a basic cross product. It involves a determinant. The determinant is 3 by 3 and has i, j and k across the top row. In the other two rows we put the components of the vectors that are in the cross product starting with the first one in the middle row. So that's b1, b2, b3. And then on the bottom c1, c2, c3. I'm going to assume that you know how to calculate a 3x3 three three determinant, so I'll go through this fairly quickly. If I expand across the top row, I can write down i, j and k terms with brackets next to them as I'll fill in subsequently. Remember that we have to alternate the sign, plus the first term, minus the second and plus the third. In the brackets go the 2x2 two two determinants formed from the elements in the row and column not containing the i, j or k. So for example for i we need the 2 by 2 determinant of b2, b3, c2, c3. I won't write that as a determinant now, I'll just write out the answer to doing the determinant. So the first one looks like that and now I'll fill in the other two. There, that's finished. Now the subsequent calculations are going to get quite complicated, so the less minus signs I have around the better. I'm therefore going to play a little trick with that middle term, the J1. I'm going to change the minus to a plus, but of course the price I must pay is that I must then go inside the bracket and reverse the order of the B and C terms. It is effectively absorbing a negative 1 into the structure in the bracket, like this. So that's the change to plus, and now in the bracket I must swap 1, 3, 3, 1 to the other order, 3, 1, 1, 3. That's done. The less minus signs I have around, the less likely I am to make a mistake later on in the calculation. The structures we see in the brackets are now the first, second and third components of the vector B cross C. I'm going to refer to them that way temporarily. So let's mark that in. Doing that will just allow me to write things a little more compactly, at least for a short time. Now, still at the top, we have our triple product, A cross B cross C. Let's write down the determinant form for that triple product. Here are the first two rows, and in the bottom row, just for the moment, I'm going to write B cross C component 1, and so on. We'll expand the determinant first, and then only later on will we uh, replace those bracketed components with what we know them to be at the top of this screen. So let's get on with the expansion. I, J and K contributions with respective alternating signs, as shown here. Now we have to fill in the brackets. I'm going to do it all at once. You can pause the video and check that I've done it right if you like. There's the full expression. And now let's repeat our trick with the minus signs. 
changing the one on the J term to plus and swapping the order 1, 3 and 3, 1 again. So now I'm stuck with the unpleasant task of substituting the various components of B cross C. Do you remember what they look like? Here they are. To get further, I've just got to substitute those in. I'll go down and do that now. However, I'm going to color code some of the terms. I'll explain why I do this a little later. I'm going to use two different colors. So here to begin with, I've filled in all the easy bits that I don't have to think much about. Now I've got to be careful to get the brackets right. So here's the final expression with some color coding using red and blue. For people who might be colorblind, don't worry, I will ring the terms that I'm talking about as I introduce them to the next step. And that next step is to focus on the blue terms. There are six of them. Two for I, two for J, and two for K. I'm going to copy these six terms out, but I'm going to reverse or change the orders of the letters in what will eventually be a suggestive way. So, for example, in the first two terms that have B1 and I in, I'm going to write the B1 next to the I. In the next pair, I'm going to write the B2 next to the J. And in the last pair, the B3 next to the K. So here are the first two that I've now circled from the top line, the line containing I. The first one has B1I and a coefficient A2C2. The second one also has B1I and it has A3C3 and it has altogether two negatives, one in front of the A3 and one in front of the B1. So that reduces to the two terms that I've written here. Now I'm going to deal with the other four in a similar way. So there, that now is all six. And notice how I've collected the B1 next to the I, the B2 next to the J, and the B3 next to the K. Now, look at the terms in the brackets. A2C2 plus A3C3. A3C3 plus A1C1, and so on. In each case, the bracket contains two out of three terms that could be the dot product of A and C. What I'm going to do is take those bracket terms and write them as the dot product of A and C minus the term that should not be there. So in the first bracket, for instance, that is A dot C minus A1C1, and so on. So there's the first one, the one with I in, and the J and K ones will be similar. But now look what happens if I expand all three brackets. In the first uh, terms, the ones containing A dot C, I will have A dot C times B1I plus B2J plus B3K. Let's write that out. And there will be three terms left to subtract the ones that are all 1s, all 2s, all 3s. And now, finally, in the next stage, I'm halfway to having a nice expression for my vector cross uh, triple product. Because look at the first term. The thing in the brackets is now just the vector b. So I have the dot product a dot c times the vector b. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the red terms. Can you guess what's going to happen? Well, I'll give you a sneaky preview. The red terms just have B and C interchanged compared to the blue ones. So what we're going to get is A dot B times the vector C. And the signs will turn out that the remaining term here with all the 1s, all the 2s and all the 3s will now appear with a plus sign instead of a minus. So it will cancel the term that's sitting here already. Let's see it happen. So let's go back and have a look at those red terms. For those of you who can't see the colors well, it's just the ones that are now no longer ringed. So for example, A2, B2, C1, I, and so on. But look, the only difference between the red unringed terms and the blue ringed ones is that the order 2, 1, or 1, 2, is opposite, and then in the next term, 3, 1, changes to 1, 3, and so on through all six terms. And 
each of those red terms has an extra minus compared to the blue one. That means we can go back to our simplification of the blue term that we've already done and we don't have to write out everything again for the red terms. All we have to do is to swap the indices on the B and C and introduce an extra minus. But naturally the effect of swapping those indices on the B and C through all the working we've done will be simply to interchange the role of B and C in the final answer and introduce that minus sign. So that's all we have to do in our final set of terms. Change the roles of B and C and include an extra minus. Let's do it. So in the first term changing the roles of B and C will make A dot B times the vector C and remember we have to have an extra minus. The second term will change its sign to plus but since here B and C just have the same components on B1, C1 and B2, C2 and so on changing the roles will not change the term it'll just make the same term again. That's really neat isn't it because now those horrible extra terms simply cancel with each other. Here then is my final expression for the vector triple product A cross B cross C. Now do you remember at the beginning I said that once I've got one of these expressions then I can get all the other combinations with different orders of the cross product or different orders of the bracketing. Let's look at that now. This formula of course holds for any A, B and C. So if I change the names of the vectors on the left the formula will still be true as long as I make the same changes on the right. So let's look at for example C cross A cross B. That amounts to a cyclic permutation where I've shuffled the A and B along to the right and moved the C off the end and brought it back to the left. Like so. To get the right hand side of the expression all I have to do is realize that A has been altered and changed its name to C, B has changed to A and C has changed to B. So I just need to effect that same change of names on the right hand side, changing A to C, then changing B to A, and finally changing C to B. Ah, but what about the other situation though, where the arrangement of the brackets has been changed? Let's look at, for example, A cross B in brackets on the left, then cross C. I'd really like to compare this with the boxed formula above. The trouble is the brackets in the wrong place. We can get it in the right place by swapping the order in the cross product with C. So putting C first and then the bracket next. C cross A cross B. But of course we must remember that when we swap the order in a cross product we introduce an extra negative sign. But that shouldn't be a problem. We just write it out that way with the minus. And now look that's just the same as the formula immediately above, the one with the A, B and C cycled along to the right and the B taken off, so the C taken off to the left hand end. The only difference is there's an extra minus sign. So we just need to copy out the right hand side of that green expression with a minus in front. So that's what it looks like, but then normally we would expand the square brackets and take the minus inside and reverse the order of the terms. So the final version would look like this. We can use these same processes to get the vector cross product of any three vectors in any order with the bracketing on either side.